Hey, thanks for checking out Next Level Carpentry. I'm Matt Jackson, uh, hanging out in the shop here on a weekend, and this is the time that I usually go through and kind of uh, reboot or reset the shop so that I can charge into the week ahead. And doing that uh, always involves a cleanup from whatever work was going on in the previous week. And cleanup almost always involves scraping of one uh, type or another. Uh, I get glue globs on stuff, I want to scrape it off. Uh, sometimes uh, paint will splatter on uh, tools. I get who knows what epoxy on the bench or something from something I was putting together. And um, so that cleanup generally involves scraping of one sort or another. And a lot of times I just use a, a putty knife, that's great. They're really durable, but on finished surfaces like uh, stainless steel or painted or anodized, uh, the scraper will just ruin the finish. So everybody knows that the best scraper for that is fingernails. I've got nine and a half of them to uh, work with, but the amount of scraping I can do or feel like doing uh, is limited by uh, my pain threshold and the length of my fingernails. So I wanted to shoot this video to show you the next best scraper that there is for uh, cleanup work of any sort. You can remove stickers from plastic, you can scrape glass, you can scrape stainless steel and not mess up the finish. And what I use for that is uh, laminate chips. The brand doesn't matter, they're all uh, pretty much the same thing. I keep a box on hand, um, but if this tip is a new idea to you, I'll tell you how you can get some chips. For free, pretty easy. If you know somebody at a cabinet shop or have access to one locally, you could go in and ask for last year's laminate samples. They come on a ring. Uh, as far as I know, they all end up in the dumpster and you can get a lifetime, uh, lifetime supply in one fell swoop. But if you don't have that uh, privilege or luxury, uh, just stop by a local home center and find the laminate display. Um, they got all these samples and do them a favor and just pick the ugly colors that nobody wants. You can tell by the ones where there's a whole bunch on the pin and you can make them feel good because they're thinking that's a hot color and you get some free scrapers out of the deal. Yeah, nobody's buying this stuff right here. Uh, Formica ones come with sharp square corners, which isn't too bad. Uh, Wilson Art and Pineite generally come with rounded corners. That's a good thing, but I just uh, get a selection, take them back to the shop and while you're at it, um, you can get some of the big ones too. They work the same way. And uh, there's plenty of them here. Next time the Formica rep comes out, he's gonna think, man, that white's a hot color. All the sample chips are gone, right? All right, we're good to go. I got chips. I'm gonna head back to the shop and maybe Chip is at the shop, but anyways, I got more chips. He's probably gonna be jealous. So after that little uh, side trip to uh, pick up the laminate chips, I'll uh, show you what I do to use these. And um, like you saw, some of them come with square corners, some come with round corners. I like the round ones uh, for, for certain scraping in little grooves or whatever. Same thing with the square ones, they'll get in a, they'll get in a tight spot. So the chips are, Good for all sorts of stuff. I didn't shoot a whole bunch of video of scraping 20 different things. Just use your imagination, you'll figure it out. But what I wanted to show specifically in the video um, was a way to improve the laminate chips to kind of supercharge them for even faster, better, more difficult cleaning. If you look close at any uh, laminate chip, they've got obviously two faces. The core and the back of this is made up with uh, paper and super highly compressed with uh, phenolic resin in it. That's what makes it hard like this. But I've seen samples of laminate being made and it's just like, you know, 50 or 100 sheets of thin paper that are all spread out. They put the phenolic resin in there and press it down. Looks like it's uh, sanded on the back. But the reason I'm explaining all this is that the front is a uh, melamine coating. It's really thin, but it's super hard gives it its durability. If you look on the corner of my table saw top, uh, I've had this 
laminate sheet on the top of here for years and it's just barely worn through on a corner. So that surface is extremely durable. It's actually waterproof um, and it's proof of about just about everything, lacquer thinner, acetone, everything. So it's really durable, but its toughness is what makes it a great scraper. If you watch many next level carpentry videos, you'll know that I use this uh, out or this side table on my table saw as an assembly table. There's always getting glue globs on it and I'm able to scrape off most of the glue on the laminate with a sharp putty knife because that surface is so durable. But the tape measure on the uh, rip fence uh, guide that's painted on and this surface is anodized. Uh, this streak is worn through here from uh, 30 years of use but I don't want to use the metal scraper on there because it'll scratch that anodized surface. So I just grab a laminate chip when there's glue on here and it comes right off without damaging any of that. If you look real close at a laminate chip, this is a Wilson Art one, um, you notice that the edges are square naturally. That, that makes perfect sense. So it's kind of a blunt scraper. It works really good for a lot of stuff. But there's times when I want to supercharge it. So what I do is cut this at a 45 degree angle so that the face of the laminate is what's doing the scraping. Uh, when it's, it's cut to a 45 degree angle, you put it on your finger, you got a cut. It's, it's really sharp. It's pretty durable, uh, but the edge does break down. Sometimes when I'm scraping something, I might use the edge on five chips or something to, to get a label off or a stubborn glob of glue or whatever. But uh, that gets back to the fact that these are basically free and the process for cutting them to a 45 is so quick and easy that they're expendable and I can scrape whatever and save my fingernails for pointing at stuff. Uh, the miter box is the obvious tool for this, but it's also obvious how unsafe it would be to try to cut the chip uh, one at a time on the miter box. Even with uh, a backup in here, it'd be dangerous. Fingers too close to the blade and it's easy for things to move around. So that even cutting one at a time would be unsafe and trying to cut a batch of them to make it fast and practical just multiplies the danger. So here's what I do. To batch cut these for efficiency, start out with a piece of solid scrap that's flat and about the width of a laminate chip laying down. Obviously, you'd want a wider scrap if you were cutting an edge on the large chips. The scrap is about 16 inches long. I'm going to cut it at a 45 degree angle, not quite in the center. Next, I will cut one corner off the other end. I need this little 45 degree angle scrap. Like that. I'm going to gather up this stuff and head to the bench. All right, so I got these two pieces of scrap cut at a 45 degree angle. And I've got the wedge piece cut off the corner. And the key to this wedge piece is making sure that it's just a little thicker than the stack of laminate chips you're going to cut. I like to cut them 10 at a time. And this is just a little bit thicker, so it'll work out nice. The other thing I need is a snappy bit. These are awesome. I'll put links to these guys. If you don't have a set, you need one. Um, and then I've got an inch and a half square drive screw. So these two pieces were just cut randomly and it's no big deal. But I want to attach this wedge to one piece so that it acts as a fulcrum for the other piece. You see that? I hope so. Uh, let's see, I'll attach it to the end of this short piece. Right there. A little stick fast activator. Can's about out. And I'm kind of switching to this Starbond CA glue for a number of reasons. But I got a good glob of it on there. With this piece standing up, I can just put this little glued on piece here and squish it up. Everything stays lined up. Got a little carried away with the glue, but that's all right. Now the triangle piece is glued to one side of one of these pieces. And I can take a stack of laminate chips, offsetting them at approximately a 45 degree angle with the 
face um, this way so that it ends up being the long point of the scraper. Once you've got this little fixture made, this whole process is quicker and easier. I don't have the best camera angle here, but go get away with it. So I'm just going to drill in here. I guess I underestimate. I'm going to get an inch and three quarter screw for cutting 10 laminate chips at the same time using three quarter inch thick material. It's another one of those things that's a lot harder to do with a camera rolling than just to do it. So what this little assembly does is hold 10 laminate chips kind of at a 45 degree angle very securely between these two blocks of wood. The, this fulcrum allows the wood to pinch those chips so they don't move when they're being cut. Back to the miter box. I just swing the saw to 45 degrees and cut somewhere near these ends. I don't have to line this all up perfectly. It'll just recut it. Another thing I'll point out is that I've got these chips are all lined up on the bottom side of this fixture. I don't want to cut it this way because the down pressure of the blade could cause those chips to slide in the blocks. But this will work perfectly. That's what I've got. The blade in this miter saw is getting fairly dull, so it was more of a fight in that cut than you would have with a sharp blade. If you were uncomfortable with this setup, you could make these blocks exactly the width of the laminate chips or line the chips up on the other side and make the cut a different direction. But all I wanted to show is how the design of this fixture holds those chips firmly for cutting them safely. I suppose if somebody really wanted to get carried away and had a newer miter box or wanted to change the setup, you could get a 60 degree angle on these instead of a 45 and make them Ginsu knife sharp. But 45 seems to be a sweet spot for sharpness and durability. You don't have to be the sharpest knife in a drawer to figure out what comes next. Releasing the 10 little scraper chips. I've got a full rainbow of nice color coordinated scrapers for scraping in style on cleanup day. And I should have shot the video before I did all my cleanup for this week so you could see how these work, but I'm sure you get the idea uh, how nice and sharp these are, how easy they are to make, and can imagine all sorts of uses for them. Just don't cut yourself. Those babies are sharp. Once you've got your little fixture made, it's super easy to cut another batch. If you don't want the rounded corners on there, just let these chips project a little farther or strictly use for mica chips that come with square corners. This is hard to do in the camera. This would have been a three minute video if I could get that done in any kind of a timely fashion. And I'll re-emphasize the point. Make sure that the angle your saw is cutting and your blocks and everything, just make sure you're comfortable with that setup. This old miter box has a real tall fence. Some of the new compound ones have a low fence on one side. Just make sure you've got enough of a backstop in there to be comfortable with the cut process. And just make your jig long enough so your fingers are out of the way. Well, I guess that about wraps up this little tip for making faux fingernails and emphasizing that the best scrapers in life are free. And I hope you find that tip useful. I keep a batch of the sh uh, sharp ones and a batch of the square ones in a drawer back here uh, for cleanup day. So I always have some on hand and just cut a sharp batch whenever those run out. So if you find this tip helpful, I'd appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing to Next Level Carpentry if you haven't already. Poke the thumbs up button so that YouTube knows uh, there's something going on here and uh, helps um, spread the word a little bit about Next Level Carpentry. I want to thank those uh, who've gone to Patreon above and beyond and signed up to be a patron of Next Level Carpentry. 
to help this channel grow by supporting video production efforts here. And um, I keep moving forward with different things. There's some really cool stuff coming up. I wish I could just forget all these videos and jump into the one um, because I'm getting closer to making a new shop door out of this pallet wood. Um, there's something exciting coming up. I've got to uh, iron out the details for that. But you can see in this SketchUp model uh, what my idea is for what the door is going to look like. And when I zoom in on the SketchUp model, you can see the detail of the casing. This is a totally unique design. It doesn't overlap the edges of the door frame or the door jam. It actually fits into the door jam and the piece is coved and angled and it's made out of uh, two different species of wood. So I'm really excited to show you guys uh, how to make that one of a kind unique trim. And as soon as I get um, all the pieces in play, I'll get to that video project so you can see it. I'll have links uh, in a shopper page for the few tools I used here. If you're going to make one of these jigs or do this stuff, um, those snappy bits are in particular and the CA glue is really useful. Uh, so if you don't have that already and you can't find it locally, check out the shopper page. They pay uh, ad fees that also help support the channel. Uh, anyways, I guess this is a wrap. Um, should be set up for the week ahead. Hope everybody's having a good weekend and we'll, well, I guess, Hope everybody had a good weekend because by the time this gets uploaded, uh, it's going to be almost Monday. Anyways, um, thanks for watching. See you next time.